Welcome to BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin. And I'm Brett Newcomb. And today we're going to talk about issues with breast cancer and hormone replacement therapy. Uh, things of, like uh, aromatase inhibitor. Mm -hmm. We're going to come to understand that terminology. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a really important conversation because there are a couple of issues that come up in women that have had breast cancer and have been treated for it and then begin to go through menopause. And there's a balancing question about the, the negative impact of the menopausal symptoms and there's an ongoing question about long-term treatment strategies to reduce or prevent the recurrence of breast cancer. And all of that is uh, extrapolated throughout the conversation about hormone replacement therapies. And it's a recent article in uh, Bre breastcancer.org, which is a, a website that sends information to doctors and to, and to people who've had breast cancer or are worried about it. Mm -hmm. um, and they came, they came out with a study that showed that testosterone pellets, which we've been using for patients with, with breast cancer for many years to decrease all of their symptoms of menopause and to prevent recurrence, they have done a study with testosterone pellets and found them to be not risky and to be exceptionally uh, uh, efficient at treating the symptoms that we can't treat with estrogen in most breast cancers. So if you have an estrogen sensitive breast cancer, we don't give you estrogen after that, so we have to think of something else. So when menopause hits, we give testosterone instead. Now they had an additional caveat, and that is that they did their study with testosterone pellets and Arimidex, and the Arimidex is an is a aromatase inhibitor. What that means is it stops the aromatization. That means testosterone becoming estrogen is aromatization. Yeah, the process of testosterone converting itself to estrogen. And it does in everyone, but not very much generally, but as we get older, it gets worse. Mm -hmm. So we have to consider that in a breast cancer patient because, because estrogen we don't want more estrogen. stimulates breast tissue. Yes, and usually estrone mm -hmm. is the bad guy. Estrone mm -hmm. is, is the old lady estrogen, as I like to call it. We don't have much of it before we go through menopause or, or uh, before our testosterone drops, but we have a lot of it as we get older. Men even have it. So estrone is what we're trying to prevent. So testosterone becomes estrone and then estradiol. We stop that process in breast cancer patients because we really don't want any estrogen going, going to them. Which, which is part of the, the difference between just relying on a logical extrapolation and relying on science. Right. Because the logical extrapolation, if you understand about the hormone replacements, if testosterone is administered, it converts itself to estrogen and in menopausal women that have breast cancer histories, there's a, a risk factor for increasing uh, stimulation in the breast tissues, which then becomes a concern about the recurrence of breast cancer. So logic would say, oh my gosh, don't do that. Right. But science says, you know, there is a way to do it if you take into consideration these factors. It's, all, it's all about how you manage, I mean, if someone says, has, makes a blanket statement, testosterone's dangerous, for mm -hmm. breast cancer patients, you already know there's a problem because that blanket statement means that every type of testosterone is dangerous. It means that every way you give it and, ev and even people who use troubleshooting like what we're talking about with the Arimidex make it dangerous. It's not dangerous if you do it right. It's, it's like if you drink too much water in a day, you could kill yourself, but water is necessary Wash out for all you. The electrolytes. So it's how you do it. Mm -hmm. And so, so even though that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at how do we get patients to feel better, get rid of all their symptoms, their depression, their fatigue, their hot flashes, their dry vaginas, their miserable sex lives after losing their estrogen and, and being unable to replace it because of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So we want women who have breast cancer to be whole again. And one, one of my, you know, one of my um, uh, pushes in legislation was to have breast cancer reconstruction made mandatory for insurance companies to cover in the state of Missouri. That went into law in 2000, and that's still law. I want women who have had this to feel like they're well again mm -hmm. and to live their lives uh, if they want construction than to be able to have it paid for. So in this way, I want people to have their lives back with their hormones, but this is a hormone that is not going to cause problems, especially because pellets are the safest because they make the least estrogen. Okay. So, so I wouldn't say just any testosterone, 
Gels tend to make a lot of estrogen, mm -hmm. and anything that goes through the skin makes a lot of estrogen out of testosterone. So do uh, vaginal tablets make a lot of estrogen. So you have to be careful about how you take your testosterone, and pellets are the safest, but then adding this drug called Arimidex to it makes it extremely safe because it prevents any estrogen from being converted from the testosterone. And you have somebody who is testosteroneized, not estrogenized, and so their risk of recurrence is extremely low. So the net net, if you add Remedex to the testosterone pellet mm -hmm. as a it delivery makes it system, safe. Er. they <laughs> don't run. They're, the data actually shows they don't have a recurrence of breast cancer. They don't run any risk for that. They don't or run any more risk for that increased risk. It doesn't prevent it altogether because there's always other reasons to have recurrences. Exactly. And they don't have the difficult menopausal system symptoms mm -hmm. that cause them uh, a serious decline in quality of life. Right. They, they're, and the real, the real take home message is if you use testosterone and, and Arimidex, mm -hmm then your risk of recurrence is lower than if you took nothing, than if you took uh, tamoxifen. The combination decreases your risk below both of those. Even, um, it, it, it's amazing because even Arimidex compete, competing in side-by-side -side studies far outstrips tamoxifen in effectiveness in terms of preventing recurrence. So when you put testosterone and Arimidex together, the, you not only have no symptoms or few symptoms, and your life is much much more comfortable, but you also can feel confident that you're not going to be at risk or higher risk of recurrence. Well, and this breastcancer.org study that's reported says that this what what Kathy's talking about was tested on women who ha who were five years beyond treatment for breast mm -hmm. cancer. And so their survival rates at five-year window had already been passed. Mm -hmm. And then the study goes on to say that uh, out of 43 best ca breast cancer survivors, 39 had been diagnosed with early stage breast cancer and four were diagnosed with advanced stage. Uh, Ruminex and testosterone planted under the skin every 90 days. Most of the women, 38, had completed treatment more than five years before the study started. And the results of the study the rep women reported their menopausal symptoms had eased. Mm -hmm. Their estradiol levels, which were measured regularly during the study, remained low, which is mm -hmm. what you're saying the Arimidex does. Mm -hmm. None of the women had any side effects or complications from the treatment at all. None of the women diagnosed with early stage breast cancer had any recurrence during the study mm -hmm. for as long as they, they followed them. Uh, and the cancer didn't grow in three of the four women who had advanced stage and breast that's, cancer. And that's phenomenal. That, that's absolutely phenomenal. So that data is out there and what it does is give hope to the women who are suffering and give information for doctors who work in this field to provide better care and better treatment. That's true. I, I have a, a, when Arimidex first came out, there were, there's several different aromatase inhibitors, Femara and Arimidex. I choose Arimidex to use with my patients because it's the only one that doesn't cause weight gain. And I'm very concerned about if you have two drugs and they both work, right. and one causes weight gain, I'm not going to use that one. Well, absolutely. I'm going to choose the one that doesn't because that's a big problem for women and we don't want to have, have that issue too. That just makes them feel worse. So, mm -hmm. so I, used a, I started using Arimidex with testosterone after reading all the new studies that said, if you have somebody who doesn't have breast cancer, that Arimidex decreases their risk of ever getting breast cancer. So it's a preventative measure as well. So in, in many cases where I test the blood and I'm, I see that a patient has low testosterone and high estrone and, and possibly high estradiol, mm -hmm. I use Arimidex in those patients to prevent them from getting breast cancer. And that's, that's even, I mean, there's a huge body of people who are worried about it. They have family histories. Right. And then th this is, these are the studies that show that it really does actually work to prevent. So when those came out and I started offering that to patients, we saw a much lower risk, although you have to wait years. Mm -hmm. we've, we've seen fewer and fewer people who get breast cancer in our practice. Some come to the practice with a small right. Right. area that we can't even see on mammogram. So it's hard to tell in the first couple of years that kind of doesn't count after therapy if they, if they get breast cancer because they probably already had it. It takes 11 years for breast cancer to go from one cell to something we can see. 11 years. 11 years. So you don't know when they may have gotten it. And, and sometimes it's, so it's silent before we can see it. So mm -hmm. oftentimes the Arimidex, if it's early, I believe would, 
what this shows, mm -hmm. even if it's advanced, would stop it or slow it down. Well, the survivability it, rates for all of these diseases are significantly impacted with early detection. Right. I mean, that's really our only defense. Find it as early as possible mm -hmm. and take care of it. And then treat yourself so that you can not get it back. But we also have prevention in the form of Arimidex. Mm -hmm. so, so you treat yourself to not get it back, but more than just breast, breast cancer, you treat yourself with the Arimidex and the testosterone so that you don't have the menopausal issues mm -hmm. and side effects that you would have had whether you had breast cancer or not. That's, that's right. And there's one other thing about testosterone that's really interesting, and that is that testosterone improves the number and activity of T cells. T cells are what people with AIDS don't have any of or have few of, but when we get older, our T cells start dropping slowly. And so as we age, we tend not to be able to fight cancers as well. So T cells are the cells that go and gobble up cancer cells. Mm -hmm. So when we treat people with just pure testosterone, we decrease their risk of all cancers because we're giving them a boost to their T cell activity and the number of T cells from the thymus and from the bone marrow. So that is something that testosterone alone does really well. So when you put these two things together, mm -hmm. decrease the estrogen and then increase the cells that fight cancer, that is, a, that is why this outcome is so good. So you, if you get this treatment early, if you have a family history but you have not identified that you have breast cancer mm -hmm. and you take this treatment, you significantly increase the chances that you won't develop breast cancer. Right, or it'll be delayed and delayed. I mean, the whole idea is to delay it past the time you die of something else. Yeah. I mean, you know, that you don't have to, you know, have that. Like men in prostate cancer. Yeah. Yeah, if you live long enough, eventually you'll die of prostate cancer. Right, but yeah. we try to delay it until you're 110, and then exactly. you, you have then, something yeah. else. Exactly. But um, there, in this research, there was some other news on menopause that I thought was interesting as well. Uh, I don't know if you wanted to talk about that or not, but mm -hmm. there were some of the myths for treating or, or for uh, you know, home remedies uh, to reduce menopausal symptoms. And one was flaxseed. Uh, my mm -hmm. wife has gotten real high on flaxseed, mm -hmm. and we have a whole quart jar full of flaxseeds, and she throws a handful in this and that and the <laughs> That's other. That's good. That's a good Just, way to take it. Is it? It's not the reason to take it, yeah, what but it's a good it thing to take. <laughs> I don't know. Flaxseed's an anti- She just says, eat it, you'll, you know. It's an antioxidant, and part of why we get cancers and we, get, and we age is oxidation of our cells. Not okay. oxygenation, but oxidation. So is that like fighting the free radicals? Yes. So she fighting, should've, she should've she, told she me should've that. told you that. Yeah. But flaxseed's also really good for dry eyes. Uh-huh. You just put them on the... <laughs> <laughs> okay, taking it orally helps dry eyes. <laughs> and you can take it as a pill that has an oil, you know, has the oil in it, or you mm -hmm. can use actual flax seeds. Actually, most people who are very dedicated to health and take the time put flax seed in their food or in their in their shake. But this research says that flaxseed doesn't, help, doesn't hot help with hot flashes. No, it doesn't. Yeah. And that's all they were saying. It doesn't help with hot flashes and it doesn't. Okay. So and it's neither, not a panacea. Take no. flaxseed and your life will be wonderful. No, well, not for that reason, but there's a good reason to take it. I'm not arguing And same that. with fish oil. Fish oil. People take fish oil so that they won't have hot flashes, but really that doesn't do much mm -hmm. because it's helping other things. It's decreasing the inflammation in your body and it's decreasing your triglycerides and, you know, so it's really helping a lot of things, but it's not helping menopausal symptoms. Okay. Were there other things on there uh, that you wanted to talk about? Lots weight people, loss helps hot flashes. Weight loss makes hot flashes worse. Oh, well, this says weight loss may help hot flashes. Well, if you're really obese, yeah. you make a ton of estrogen, not the good kind, the bad kind. So if you're really obese, you don't have hot flashes because it's feeding back to your brain and shutting down the hot flash. Hot flashes happen because your pituitary gland is making FSH and LH, and it used to stimulate our ovaries to make estrogen. Estrogen would then feed back to our, our brains and shut down FSH. When you don't have ovaries that are working anymore, they don't respond. Right. And therefore, the lower the estrogen, the more the hot flashes happen. So skinny okay. little people mm -hmm. generally have the worst hot flashes. Oh, wow. And then really obese people don't have any. I always hear people at the beauty shop and they're like, oh, I'm so lucky I don't have hot flashes and I never have, and they feel superior to everyone. But they weigh 300 pounds. 
So I know why they don't have hot flashes. But somewhere in the middle. You probably don't sleep on Tempur-Pedic mattresses either. No, those make you really hot. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And but but the people in the middle, there there's a huge range of normal sized people. Mm -hmm. Some people who are exactly the same body type, one will have terrible hot flashes and one won't. And, it's an, and the it's, differential is caused by the, the feedback loop for the estrogen? Estrogen and your and pituitary FSH. gland working together. And, and when you stop having estrogen, then your FSH keeps going. The reason testosterone w works right. is because tes testosterone fools the pituitary gland. It goes to the pituitary and says, oh, we have testosterone. It hits the same receptor sites as estrogen, and it shuts off the hot flashes. So that's why testosterone works for this. Okay. So today's conversation is about different medical treatments that impact both the existence of menopausal systems and talking pretty significantly about breast cancer and the new research that's out about breast cancer and hormone replacement therapy. If you're interested in checking this out yourself, you can go to the website breastcancer.org or you can contact us directly. At biobalancehealth.com or you can you can email us at podcast at biobalancehealth.com or call my office at 314-993-0963. And you can always reach me at brettnewcomb.com.